Hallelujah. Father in heaven, we thank you for your holy presence in this place. There is joy in your house. And we are joyful. Thank you that we are in your presence and not in prison. We bless your wonderful name. There is no like you, Jesus. Ebubedike. We exalt you. If it had not been you who was on our side, who's always on our side. When the enemy rose up, we have been swallowed up. <laughs> but the psalmist said, but praise be to God, who has not allowed the enemy to prevail. We thank you for your mighty hand in this place. The one that saith and it cometh to pass. The equipment himself. The wind that cannot be stopped. <laughs> hey! Oh, Yama. The I am that I am. The one who was, who is, and who is to come. Odumebo <laughs> Judah. The lion of the tribe of Judah. Ovieivie. The king of kings. Obanuta Baruru. The one whose hand covered the whole earth. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. Amen. The topic for this morning is with each word comes a promise. That is a topic. With each word of God comes a promise. With each word of God comes a promise. And the scripture text is from Genesis chapter 10, verse 1 and 2. I mean chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I want you to put the scripture on the screen so that every one of us can read. With each word of God comes a promise. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Says the Lord said to Abraham, Go out, get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show you. Verse 2. Says, And I will make of thee a great what? Nation. And I will bless thee, and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. The instruction he gave to Abraham that he should move out of his kindred, leave his family, leave where you have you are used to, and go to where I myself will show you. And the promise attached to that instruction, there are four blessings in that place. You look very well. Number one, he said he will make him a great nation. Not only that, he will bless him and make his name great. And also then he will be what? A blessing. Four blessings. Four promises. To just one instruction. Praise the Lord. You see, every instruction, as the word has told us, carries his blessing. Each word comes with a promise, but we all know to assess that promise, we must have what? Faith. Praise the Lord. This morning, <clears throat> promises has come from God for each and one of us. Instructions are also coming. Most of the time, we just kind of pretend as if we didn't hear the instruction. Because sometimes, sometimes it's as if it's not palatable to our natural uh, sense. Hallelujah. If you read also Genesis chapter 24, 1 to 30, I want us to take that scripture. That's why when you get home, you meditate on it. Talking about the servant of God. So also Abraham gave his servant instruction. And we see instruction, when instructions come, you and I have a choice to make. Whether to go or not to go. Whether to obey or not to obey. Every instruction. Require what? Your choice. God is not going to force you. To obey him. 
every instruction carried what? A choice. Hallelujah. Abraham obtained the promise God made to him. Because he obeyed instruction. The reason many of us, we stay just where instruction is. Because we don't go by faith and obedience. Every instruction for us to obtain the promise, we must go by obedience and faith. And that takes your choice. You have to make up your mind. Either to believe God or to believe the circumstances that are surrounding you. Or to believe the, the trials that are testing the world. The things that are testing the world. Because when the structure comes, it will be tested. It will be what? Tested. The promises will be tested. Then it will look all natural law will be fighting against that promise. To make it look as if God is what? A liar. But we all know that God is not a man that he should lie. Praise the Lord. We are always led by the Lord. And we have a choice to go or not to go in the way of obedience and faith. If you read the story of Abraham's servant, when Abraham gave him that instruction, he has a choice. I must what? Be ready to go on the way of obedience and faith. That is the choice he made. Abraham's servant prayed to the Lord. He committed destruction unto God. Praise the Lord. And then, Hallelujah. When God told Abraham, go, get thee out of the place, and to a place I will show you, he didn't tell him, this is the exact place. Imagine God telling you, Faye, leave your house where you are now and go to where I will show you. Just carry your bag and just be moving. Abraham did not look at the natural situation around him. He didn't contemplate the situation. Rather, what did Abraham do? He focused on the power of he that said, go. So the reason why most of the time we when the structure comes, we, we remain at the point of instruction. We are contemplating the situation. We are contemplating the, 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 the situation surrounding you at that point in time. Because the situation, the instruction is contrary to natural laws. It is not natural for God to test somebody, go to where I will show you and you don't know where you are going. It's not natural. That's where we have problem. We stay in the, at the point of instruction and we begin to ask God questions. Abraham did not ask any question. He did not even blink to say, what kind of message is this? What kind of assignment is this? The Bible said, he took his family and did what? Left. To the place that God will show him. Not to the place he knew. Abraham contemplated only on what God has said. The power of he, the one who said it. He had a relationship at that point in time with God. And knew that if this God, that is somebody who was worshipping idol. Then a greater power comes and said, move, I'm going to show you a place. When, as you are going, this is what I will do in your life. What Abraham did was to shift his, he made a choice to shift his focus from the natural point to the supernatural. Hallelujah. Abraham had the choice to make. To say, Father, well, let me hear from you first. The place you want me to go. If you don't make sure it, I won't go. But Abraham looked at God. Knew who he is serving. And moved. Anytime I choose to look at the natural law around me, 
what I'm doing is that I'm yielding to doubt. And the Bible made us to understand that to whom you yield yourself to obey, that is the person that will become you what? Your master. Doubt will become your master. Because you are looking at the situation, you are not looking at the person who said it. Abraham chose to look at the person who told him to move. In spite of all the situation around him, I'm sure Abraham have, have not left that his place for that 75 years. He has never moved before. And God is telling him, move. So instructions are coming. They have been coming. Many of us, like I said last week, many of us seated here, many of us wash bedings in different ways. Even before you come here, God has given you instructions. We are still at the point of instruction. We are still at the point of instruction. Still dilly-dialing with our natural law. Still dilly-dialing with the situation around us. Still, con still conversing with the, 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 the circumstances. And God saw those circumstances before he instructed you. God saw it. God said... You shall have a child by this time. Next year, you will have a child. And you are saying, ah. That was what Sarah did. He laughed. He said, ah, me that is old. What will happen to me at this age? When it has passed the nature of a woman. See, for me and you to obey God, it's a choice. Now you and I, had to make. God is not going to make a choice of obedience and faith for you. You have to make up your mind. That is why in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 he said, if thou, that is about you, you will obey this commandment that I give to you. These are the blessings that I will give to you. If thou, that is you, it's not God that will obey for you, it's not God that will have faith for you. If you will obey this commandment that I give to you, these are the promises attached to the instructions if you obey. Instructions will come in different ways that if you are not sensitive in the spirit, we just kind of mix them. Most of the time we even know it's instruction, but like I said, we contemplate on the situation instead of thinking on the one who said it. Contemplating means dwelling on, thinking on something. You are just thinking about the situation that I around you. You are not thinking about the God who said it. Abraham knew that the God who said it is more than enough. If he said it, he will do it. Honorary servant of Abraham followed the instruction of his master to the letter. He said, I will go. He made a choice to go. And he believed the God of his master. Now that is the God of his master. If you listen to his prayer, when he was praying, he said, God of my master, Abraham. He believed in the God of his master. That is why instead of going by himself, he went by that God of his master. And he committed destruction into the master's hand. He said, God of my master, this is the errand your servant sent me. Help me to succeed. Help me to succeed in this instruction. And the Bible made us to understand. As soon as he finished praying, committed the matter into God's hand, the answer came. No delay. So anytime you yield to instruction, you choose to obey God, walk in obedience and faith, the answer, instant answer. Jesus said, took mud and wiped the blind man's eyes. He said, go and wash in the, in the pool of Chilwa. That is a blind person. Somebody is already blind. You pack in mud again to put into the person's eyes. The blindness is more worse. You now put sand again. It's okay, go. With that again to go and watch. The man obey and he returned with what? Testimony. He chose to obey. He could have complained. Say, How can I go? I'm blind and you have put sand in my eyes again. So how am I going to zero to go? He could have just contemplated on that situation. But he chose to go, obey. He went and he did what? Washed. 
himself. He came return what? Sin. When the man contemplated on his uh, status, he could have missed his cleansing from leprosy. He, did, he, he was contemplating a, 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 a Syrian, the Syrian uh, 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 military, how do they call it, officer, or guy, I should go of all the pools in this place. Elijah could not tell me where to go. Is this dirty river Jordan that I will go? He was contemplating on his status, who he is, his level, and he's carrying leprosy. If it's about your level, why did you carry leprosy? A servant said, uh-uh. if he had told you to go, it's the same thing, just what? Obey. And he obeyed. He returned what? Glass. Praise the Lord. If the servant of if the servant of Abraham had gone in the way of obedience and faith, if he had gone in the way of disobedience and doubt, he would have done what Miss Rebecca. He would have seen Rebecca. And the, 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 the instruction, there would have been frustration. Maybe he would have just made up his own choice and just pick any woman that he likes just to obey God, the, the, the servant of God. Praise the Lord. There is always a promise attached to every word, instruction from God. And the only way to assess the promise is to go by the way of what? Obedience and faith. In the previous week, we have learned that obedience and faith go, must go hand in hand. Obedience and faith must go hand in hand. If you say you have faith and you don't obey, you don't have faith. Hallelujah. So whatever we are asked to do by God, there is always a promise. As we have read in Genesis 12, 1 and 2. There is always a blessing that attaches itself in God's instruction. Always blessing. He said, I will make thee a great nation. I will bless thee. And you do what? You will be a blessing. How many blessings attached to one instruction? Many times we don't take note of this. We are unaware of this. Many times when instruction comes, God might not even tell you the blessing attached. But always be conscious. Know that before God is telling you to do something, there is a blessing attached. It's not always He's going to tell you, this is what I'm going to do if you do this. He might just tell you, give an offering to one of the sisters around here. And that's it. Just obey. Do it. He will not tell you the blessing is attached. All he will just, he just manifest it. And you just, oh, he asked me to do this and I did this and God answered. Praise the Lord. Every time we are privileged to obey God in any instruction, for example, giving offerings, going to clean the house of God, God might just wake you up in the morning, go to my house. I'm going to clean my house. He might just wake you up. Pray for this person. And maybe the person says, is, to you is your enemy. Maybe he has done some terrible things to you before. And God is waking you up. Pray for this person. Just obey. Praise the Lord. So long as instruction is from God, just obey. Hallelujah. We might not necessarily want to be the ones to initiate prayers for God's blessing. Praise the Lord. Blessings are always unfailingly attached to what? Instructions. To his word. Sometimes you don't need to initiate any blessing. Just do what he asks you to do. And he will do what? He will manifest the blessing by himself. The thought that he has towards you, they are of good and not of evil. To give you what? A glorious end. So anytime you obey his instruction, there is always a glorious end. God is not a tax master. He does not overuse people for free. When he's giving you instructions, just obey. Make the choice to obey. Don't look at the situation. Don't look at the circumstances. 
Don't dwell on the circumstances. Don't think or meditate on the circumstances. Dwell on the one who said, go. Dwell on the one who gave you the instruction. It is more than enough to bring to pass what he has planned to do. Amen. Praise the Lord. Abraham was simply empowered when he contemplated on the word, on him. So anytime you are contemplating on what, who is speaking and what he has said, it empowered your faith. It empowered your faith. It will empower your faith. He wasn't looking at himself, but on God. He was not dwelling on his ability. He was dwelling on God's ability. He wasn't dwelling on his capacity. He was dwelling on God's capacity. Because he knows at that point in time, he has no shy. So how can I be a father of what? Nations. That is a circumstance for him to make the choice. He said, I'm not going. But he, was, he didn't look at that. He only looked at the God who said it and what God has said. Hallelujah. So Abraham chose to believe in the power of God. So we are here seated today. What has God said to you? Are you still dwelling on your situation? On the circumstances surrounding this, um, the instruction? Or you are dwelling on the one who said and what he has said? Hallelujah. It's a choice. It's a choice. Faith is a choice. And it's only individual choice. You cannot say, okay, let us have faith. Uh-uh. Come, let us have faith. Have your faith. According to my faith. According to your faith. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 2 9 is here. God has given it. Like I said previous week, God has moved on from 2018. He's only waiting for us to catch up with him. First Corinthians 2 9. And the word, this early morning while we were praying for the meeting, he said, measure sure faith. What is this issue about that with God's children? I can't understand it. Even for me, when I doubt, I can't even understand why I'm doubting. The next minute, I'm praising God Almighty. You are mighty. You are everything powerful. And then he says something to me. I'm wondering, how is it going to come to pass? Wow. We can just switch, eh? Just switch. Next minute, we are on faith. Second minute, we are on doubt. Next second, we are on faith. We proclaim him how great. We have just sang and praised him. How great he is. Great and big. And everything. And now God is saying something. Somebody, somebody seated down here now. He's th- thinking, what has God just said? Is it possible? Wow. May God help the body of Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Someone post or sent something to my WhatsApp. How so they were traveling to Abuja and somebody was preaching in the bus. How he saw revelation of heaven. And praise God, heaven is real. Heaven is that beautiful. It's a great city. God is mighty. Then after he finished preaching in the bus, they, uh, uh, they, they came across Boko Haram. So everybody, calm down. If you confess Muhammad this way, if you, conf- you are confessing Christ this way, a young boy, a small child of four years, a whole Bible, to him, he felt, ah, this is what somebody has just said now. They will go to heaven. So the boy did not confess. He just said, I'm going to heaven, I'm going to heaven. And they cut his neck. And then he now got to the man who was just preaching. How He said he has seen the revelation of heaven. That is a good place to go. And when he came to his tongue, he threw the Bible away and said he's not a Christian. He threw the Bible away so that they won't see the Bible in his hand. One minute, we are confessing Christ. Second minute, we are doubting. What is wrong with us? What is wrong with me? I don't know about you. What is wrong with me?
God will help us to overcome doubt in the name of Jesus Christ. Because God make it clear, doubt, unbelief is what? It's a sin. So if you say you are not stealing, you are not fornicating, if you are walking in unbelief, you are what? Sinner. Let, me, let it be raw like that. If you are walking in unbelief, God has said something to you, you are doubting God today, you are walking in sin. Because unbelief is what? It's sin. You may not steal, you may not tell, you may not be doing other things. But if you are walking in unbelief, you are walking in what? In sin. I think that should be where we should find our, we should always meditate on anytime I'm doubting. I have this fear, oh, if I'm doubting, I'm walking in sin. Then I caution myself. I switch to faith. How can we praise God the next minute? How great he is. And he tells me to go to Egbeda. It becomes an issue. The great God cannot take me to Egbeda. Again. We say his hand is stretched forth. And no one can turn it back. So his hand cannot hold me. And take me to Egbeda. The next minute I just said that. His hand is mighty. But go to Egbeda. And without the hand again. It's a serious issue. And Father, you have to help us. You have to help me. You have to help your children. Have mercy on us. Help us to overcome doubt. Help us to overcome unbelief. Help us to always look at you and not the circumstances. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father in heaven, I don't know. We need your power. Father, we need your power, your grace to walk in faith and obedience in the mighty name of Jesus. <clears throat> Moses said, go and deliver my people. Moses was looking at himself first. He said, I cannot speak. I cannot do this. I cannot do that. Send someone else. The Lord rebuked him. And he decided, okay, let me believe this God. So today, make a choice to walk in faith. Make a choice to walk in faith. No matter what you and I are seeing. No matter the circumstances. You hear the word that came. Be patient with God. Faith and patience work together. Be patient with him. Let's be patient with God. You cannot say you have faith and you are not patient. You cannot say you have faith and you are not patient. Faith is not anxious. Faith does not fret. Faith is not jittery. When you are walking in faith, you be at peace. If you are walking in faith, you are patient. Patiently waiting for the promise to come to pass. Anytime you are walking in true faith, patience is always there. Self-control is always there. So let's check ourselves. Whenever I'm jittering, whenever I'm, I'm, I'm anxious, it means I'm out of faith. But when I see the situation around me and I'm peaceful, I'm restful in my spirit, it means you are walking in faith. By the time I begin, hey, God said, when will it, hey, God, when will you answer? Hey, don't claim to be walking in faith. And at that point, you are not obedient to the problem. You are not obedient to God at all. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So watch yourself. Always check on yourself. Am I walking in faith in this situation? Which area are you not operating faith? Because we can operate faith in one area and operate doubt in another area. I can say headache go and it will go. But another situation will come. I'm walking in doubt. 
You can believe God. As I said, I need money today. I receive it. Suddenly you get it. You can believe God for that. But something else will come. You are doubting again. Off and on. That's why we need to wash ourselves. In this area, I'm, I can, I'm working in faith. When this area comes, how am I operating? I'm operating faith or I'm still looking at my situation. God has said you have your children. And that is what God said. God is not changing it. His word is not going back to him for it. It must prosper in your life. So why am I jittering? Why am I anxious? Why am I worrying? He's the one that has said. He's the one that will do it. But every time you need to wash yourself, because every time God will come, we check whether there is faith in your heart. The day that testimony will manifest and God comes, I pray that you will find faith. That's why Jesus can say, when I come, will I find faith on earth? When I come, I've given my promise and I want to manifest it in the life of Sister Winnie. When I come, will I find faith in Sister Winnie? So that I can give to her what I have said. Will I find faith in wash maidens when I come? Lord, have mercy and help our unbelief. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's rise up on our feet. Father, help our faith to be stable. Father, help our faith to be stable. Father, help our faith to be stable. Because the word says, I say, the one that moves waves here and there, say that one will not receive anything. When our faith is moving here and there, wave like the sea. He said, let not that man think that he will do what? Receive anything. The promises has come. Sometimes God will just give the promise first. Then after he will start giving the instruction. To each and every one of us. The promise is 1 Corinthians 2, 9. The instructions will be coming. And as people that God has called to pray for the church, the instruction will be coming concerning the church. Somebody is touching this morning that he should pray for souls. The word that came this morning, the word for that person, that he should do what? Pray for souls. That is her instruction. But you see, as simple as that instruction looks, when that, God forbid, people, when they go to their prayer closet, instead of praying for souls, the prayer will shift to self again. Ah, what about my matter? That's how we shift. That's how we shift. It's as simple as the instruction is. The Lord will help us. Our faith will not wave here and there anymore in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever God has said to you before now, go back to it. Go and meet God and tell God, Lord, this you said to me some time ago. I return to fulfill it, to do it as you want me to. Lead me. I'm ready. Put aside the circumstances situation that are surrounding it. Don't bother yourself. Joseph could have turned back and said, I'm not doing it again. He knew what God said to him, that you are going to be a ruler. And circumstances contrary to the world was just fighting and fighting. First of all, inside the pit. Second time, slavery, third, prison. At the end of the day, did the promise come to pass or not? He held on to God. He could have sinned with Potiphar's wife so that he can be free. Have the pleasure of the world. But he shows, he said, how can I do this and sin against my God? What he was doing, he, he, he focused on the God who showed him his future. Let's not take First Corinthians 2 9 for, for granted. Mommy showed they said it. <laughs> it, start, it has started already. One thing I learned something God 
make me to understand something. Whenever his word comes, the Bible says it will not return to him void. Hmm. The fact that it did not manifest in my life does not mean that the word returned to him void. Because as all of us are seated here, even if it's one person that manifested first Corinthians 2 9, it is settled. It is God that person made a choice to receive that word. As many as we are, words have been coming all over the churches, all over the world. This is what God is saying. And if you look around, he's talking about the new dawn. And what first Corinthians 2 9 is talking, he's talking about new beginning, new dawn, new things, great things. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, it has not entered the heart of any man. What he has pre- he's done already, not that he's preparing, he has done it already. And now, you think, okay, you know, I beg. Whether you believe the word must not return to him voice, even if it's one person that receives it, it is done. Me, I want to be that one person. I don't know about you, but I want to be that one person that we manifest first Corinthians 2 9. Because we think that mm, because he didn't work for you, you think now so God they talk. Maybe the servant of God, they are the one who will lie. God cannot lie. Is the servant of God, they are the one lying. They are the one lying. It's God cannot lie. They are just saying their word. That's why it's not coming to pass. It's only you it didn't come to pass. Others are manifesting it. So it means the word did not return to him what? Void. It has accomplished the purpose of which he has sent it. It is you that did not make up your mind to align with it. Praise the Lord. So make up your mind. It's only faith that will help us to obtain the promise. It's only faith, obedience of, and faith that will help us to obtain the promise. What God has said. Apart from that, nothing. But as we are sitting here, we are people that God has destined to receive. To obtain. And we must obtain it. In the name of Jesus Christ. I bring down the power of circumstances. That takes our eyes from God. I decree and I declare. That they shall not hold you anymore. The hold of circumstances and situations. That will not allow you and me. To focus on what God is saying. Or who is speaking. Today that hold is broken. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare. That none of us will walk in doubt. In the name of Jesus Lord, as you cause the faith of Abraham to stand strong, Lord, we ask that by your power, cause our faith to stand strong. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because as the Lord liveth, whose we are, who we serve, what God has said concerning you and I, from 1 Corinthians 2, 9, shall be made manifest in your life in the name of Jesus. It shall be made manifest in the area that is applied to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I shall not walk in doubt. I refuse to walk in doubt. I refuse to walk in unbelief. I receive power to go all the way with God. I choose to go all the way with God. I choose to go all the way with God. In the name of Jesus Christ. From henceforth my choice is faith. From henceforth my choice is faith and obedience. In the name of Jesus Christ. No power will stop me anymore. In Jesus mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Put your hands together for Jesus.